just sanding this wall down. And uh, because the paper that's going on this wall is so thin, it shows any little um, lump under the wall. So really, all I'm doing is denibbing the wall from any little fine lumps. The actual plaster is lumpy. It's, it's you know, it's not smooth. So the idea of getting a sander on it and trying to sand it down with an electric sander is just no good. Um, because I'm not after getting it a thousand percent smooth. It's just getting rid of the lumps and the little nibs. Now, what I've been taught off the down is when you've got your sandpaper, have it in your hand, so the palm of your hand is also rubbing on the wall. It might sound a bit gaff, but what it does, if you pick any lumps up with the palm of your hand, you can stop and sand it straight away. So as you're sanding, you'll feel a lump with the palm of your hand, and you can get rid of it and carry on. Stop. It's so much, it's just the way it's done. I'm going to show you how to paper this wall. Uh, it's been prepared, all the filling's done on it. It's been sealed with PVA and then um, I've sanded it down. So it's now ready to paper. So what I'm going to do first of all is check how many lengths I need for the wall. I'm going to start in this corner and work that way. It doesn't matter with this paper because there's no true pattern to it so it doesn't matter which corner you're starting as long as you start from the natural light and work away from the natural light so from this corner i'm going to work to there and then i'm going to start from the corner over there and work back this way to this corner so putting your paper to the wall what you want to do is just check up the side of the plaster and just have a look where it dips in and where it dips out and where it dips in you're better off putting your paper there, See, two pencils, and then put a mark just a quarter of an inch in. And that's what you're going to be put, putting your plumb line down. So, taking your plumb bob. pencil marks behind the line. You don't need loads, you just need enough to follow. It's really important to get that line right because if that goes wrong or your paper ink goes wrong instructions five minutes now. And I know for a fact it's going to take more than one roll on this wall. Wait. 
So I've got my timer ready to turn the paper. I'll just put uh, five minutes on that. Leave that there. Right. Opening the paper face up to you. So you can check over the pattern. You can make sure there's no marks or anything like that. And taking your tape measure, measure the wall. So that's seven foot one, two, three, seven foot four. So really, you want an inch and a half either side. So seven foot four, seven foot five, seven foot six, seven foot seven. I've got a six foot mark on the bench. Straight back. And then you can just measure back the foot and seven inches. Basically, you can do yourself a few rolls, a few lengths, sorry. Always making sure you're keeping everything in line. Your bench is nice and straight. Because that helps with your cuts. Now, I may get four lengths out of the roll because there is no pattern match. It's a free match, this is so. So yeah, I've got four lengths out of the roll there. I have a feeling that wall's possibly just going to take six lengths. So what I'm going to do is check it. helps with the paper not springing back on you uh, and you always have to check the face of the paper Do. And this is just out of habit because on every paper, every leg, I just make some a fine line across the top. One, it allows me to know which is the top of the paper every time, although your longer fold is usually the top of the paper. But this helps when you're cutting off pieces and you've got bits. And then you cut a side off, and you know where the top is straight away. It's just makes things faster from here. And what you've got to do is fold the paper back the other way.
give it a bit of a squeeze. And what you're doing is you're breaking its back to protect the springiness out of the paper. So when I turn it over the other way, it will all fold up on the I mean sometimes you still get it doing it because these plastic coated papers are so springy they just don't give. is to leave them all in the centre of your bench, right in the centre. Right, and then take the first piece and offer it up to the edge. And see how it. using a ready mix paste for this. Always making sure you're working away from your bench. Never pull it back as well. edges of your paper are one of the most important parts to get the paste on. Basically, when that's pasted, put it out of the way where you're not going to stand on it and start the timer running. So as soon as my timer goes off, I'll put this paper up. But while the timer's running, I carry on pasting. Because then what I do, as soon as I put the first length up, carry on and put the second length up. And usually I can get three pasted in well we can get another two pasted in five minutes usually. But this is ready mixed paste so 
it's a bit more difficult to spread. And what you want to do in your second piece is make sure you know it's number two. And then the third one goes beyond it because you don't want to be getting them mixed up.
checking your pencil, because this is getting emulsioned, it doesn't matter, I can mark the front of it or the back of it. There's a little bit of trimming off at the side as well. Uh. Sometimes when I put a pencil mark on, it depends which way you stood. And it's just easier. You can use razor blades, I don't like using them personally. Taking your cloth, make sure you wipe the excess paste off the ceiling. And then check over it, make sure there's no bubbles in it. may not be able to see me too well down here but there's other videos where I do show you things more cutting. Again, using your cloth, wipe off the paste off the scraping board. best to put this these step ladders for the camera. Let's just look at it. You might not see much of this.
There's no overlapping on that joint, it's just butt up.
Sana. Really important that is, especially when you're using pattern papers, to keep the pattern perfectly true. Every length has to be soaked exactly to the same time.
Now I know the last piece is going to need cutting.
So this next piece needs cutting. And you've always got to make sure you cut off the right side. You know, make sure you check, double check and check again. I do it so many times myself and cut off the wrong side. So what you've got to do is imagine how it goes up on the wall. So basically I need that edge going down there. So this is the side I need on this bench, the side of the bench here. And what you do is you line it up to the side perfectly. Take the tape measure, measure at the top. So I'm going to go for eight and a half inches. So then eight and a half inches, finger on the side of the bench, pencil, and your tape measure, and just draw it down. Now keeping the bottom of your scissors on the bench. If you're not going to use it that day, what you want to do is open it up and just allow it to dry and then you can reuse that the next day. And again, I don't have to mess about with it because I know exactly which is the top and I know exactly which side I've cut off because I put a pencil line across that's why I put a pencil line on Why don't I use a seam roller? But I've never really found the need to, to be honest. I like using my fingers and the back of my nails. I mean, some papers, if it's really expensive paper, I might get the uh, seam roller out um, so you don't leave any uh, marks up the paper, especially if it's a sheen on the front of the paper, you don't want to be rubbing it with your fingers and things like that. So there is different techniques for every paper. Um,
too bad. What I'll do in a minute, I'll give you a closer look at some of the cutting and uh, some of the joints because I need to talk about some of these joints. Um, some of these modern papers now, I think it's the way they're made on the rolls, the machines and that, that they seem to leave a, a kind of an anomaly within the edges of the paper. Um, they just about you can just about deal with it, but I think the manufacturers need to address it because um, it's a bit of a pain, especially when you're a perfectionist. Let's have a look. So starting off with the corner there, you can see I've come round the wall by a little bit. And the cutting in, sorry the uh, cutting at the top, uh, I'll, show, I'll take it across to where there's a joint, just there, so the cutting has got to be perfectly neat across them joints, I'll just show you another one, uh, just there, you know your cutting has got to be really neat across the top so when it's emulsion you don't see where the other piece of paper joins. Right, now going to some of these joints, what you find is it touches together there and it seems to come out a little bit there and then it seems to touch together there and then it comes out a bit and then touches a bit, comes out a bit, touches a bit and this is on all the papers, right, and it's a pain. But the way you deal with it is you have to try and manipulate the bits where it's touching and pull them out slightly and then the bits where it's not you need to push them in slightly. So you have to go up your paper pulling and pushing, pulling and pushing. So come on paper manufacturers, sort it out. <laughs> 